Judas to confess that he was Lord above kings and rulers, priests and temple. But it was his difficult task to keep to the position he had chosen as one with humanity. The angels of heaven witnessed every movement made against their loved commander. They longed to deliver Christ. Under God, the angels are all powerful. On one occasion, in obedience to the command of Christ, they slew of the Assyrian army in one night 185,000 men. How easily could the angels, beholding the shameful scene of the trial of Christ, have testified their indignation by consuming the adversaries of God. But they were not commanded to do this. He who could have doomed his enemies to death bore with their cruelty. His love for his father and his pledge made from the foundation of the world to become the sin bearer led him to endure uncomplainingly the coarse treatment of those he came to save. It was part of his mission to bear in his humanity all the taunts and abuse that men could heap upon him. The only hope of humanity was in the submission of Christ to all that he could endure from the hands and hearts of men. All right. <clears throat> he bore a lot. All right, let's go back to the great controversy, time of trouble, and look at oh. how we... There's one part here in the Desire Ages that we must get to. And we'll do that next time, but now, as we wrap up for tonight, Jacob's night of anguish, when he wrestled in prayer for deliverance from the hand of Esau. Now, a lot of time, we browse over these things in a superficial manner. But I want to show you the consistency <clears throat> and what we are looking at. <clears throat> the representation or this trouble is based on the family of these two brothers, Esau and Jacob. Of course, we know that Jacob became what? Israel. But notice that his agonizing trouble was because of his brother, his brethren. <laughs> Jacob's night of anguish when he wrestled in prayer for deliverance from the hand of Esau. Find that in Genesis 32. Represents the experience of God's people in the time of trouble. Because of the deception practiced to secure his father's blessing intended for Esau, Jacob had fled for his life, alarmed by his brother's deadly threats. Mm. After remaining for many years an exile, he had set out at God's command to return with his wives and children, his flocks and herds, 
to his native country. On reaching the borders of the land, he was filled with terror by the tidings of Esau's approach at the head of a band of warriors, doubtless bent upon revenge. Jacob's company unarmed and defenseless seemed about to fall helpless victims of violence and slaughter and to the burden of anxiety fear was added to the crushing weight of self-reproach, for it was his own sin that had brought this danger, his only hope was in the mercy of God, his only defense must be prayer. Yet, he leaves nothing undone on his own part to atone for the wrong to his brother and to avert this threatened danger. So should the followers of Christ as they approach the time of trouble, make every exception. Place themselves in a proper light before the people. To disarm prejudice, and to avert the danger which threatens liberty of conscience. So we know where that's, that is going. And as I said earlier, liberty of conscience. God's people will be forced to worship the beast. Let's see how the beast, they're all tied in. Oh yes, the beast. That's why we must understand the beast. From the tip of the horns to the tip of the claws or to the tip of the hooves. Mm -hmm. We must understand the beast. So let's sum up what we have looked at tonight as we are preparing, as we are traveling down to the root of this trouble. We have familiarized ourselves with some of the trouble that Christ faced uh, in his days, and by whom the trouble was wrought. We have looked at the description regarding God's people and we notice that it focuses on Jacob, Jacob's time of trouble. All right? Ah, uh, this is crucial. And this is very important to understand. As of tonight, don't take for granted that because you know of the Sunday law, uh, you know of the Sunday law that the Sunday and everywhere you see that uh, 
Well, you hear news that the Sunday law will soon be enforced. Sunday law will soon be enforced. And so everyone is focusing on the Sunday law and what the Pope is doing. God's church needs to look at the root of the trouble because if your focus is on the Sunday law, you might well have been deceived already if that's all you're looking at. Looking at the top of the tree <laughs> and miss what is happening at the root is a great deception, is darkness and gross darkness coming on God's people. Don't be distracted. And so follow us and we will lead you where the light is shining brightly. Because a lot of things are fuzzy. A lot of things are fuzzy to God's people. And that's why you see the excitement when somebody say, Oh, Sunday law, oh, whoo, the crowd is gone there. Ah, God's church must be aware of what is happening. And oh God is going to equip his people during the time of trouble. God will equip his people during this great time of trouble. Remember we have what is called a great and dreadful day. Great for God's people, but dreadful for the wicked. And all of that we and should understand. Church. Because that is going to set the stage of how we relate to the time of trouble. All right, so let's sing a song. I don't see my, my jottings, but if you have a if you Enough. have one, I will sing. Yeah, let's sing from the hymn as we close. Let's sing 617. We are living, we are dwelling in the grand and awful time, in an age of age. Is telling to be living is sublime.
Amen. Of eternity to spend. Eternity. It is a fight. So, oh, wishy-washy, feeble, feeble, we labor to stand. And that is because your own will be coming against you, your own, for standing for rights and standing for truth. Let us pray. May the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship and the communion of the comfort of the Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide. Be delivered, be anointed. God bless you. Stand firm. Remember, some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all of us covered under his blood. That's the only way we can make it out of here. So no matter what you're going through, continue to pray, continue to have faith, and trust in God, because he is the only way out. God bless you. Join us tomorrow. We'll be back. Share the video. Thank you much.